Okay, we're going to do a vacuum cleaner comparison of the Multi Richards Ultra Light and the Electrox Bar Cyclonic Light. We're going to do a side by side comparison of which machine can clean up this fine, dirty, gritty mess better. Okay, now let's start off with the Electrolux on the right. Very minimal agitation. So as you can see, the Electrolux bus has done a terrible job at cleaning up the mess. Moving on to the Dwarfy Broom. That is so much better. can see clearly by the results that the Morphe Richards has done a slightly better job even though both machines have done terrible on this test the Electrolux has actually unfortunately clogged itself with the cyclonic discharge chamber clogging its shroud slightly filters are indubitably clogged as well with fine dirt let's have a look as predicted vile nasty empty the filter location now that's done empty both chambers as well which is very hard by the way because look at all that dirt still remaining in between the gap you gotta really shake it out quite a terrible design isn't it so that renders the electrox of bus disqualified from this test the winner is a terrible dwarfy broom okay clearly you can see that this part of the carpet has just been made messier because this machine hasn't actually picked up a lot of the debris and especially this line here, this is where the belt is or as I basic would call it, the line of shame so yeah, both machines haven't really done that well I'm going to use the winner, which is the Dwarfy Broom oh, sorry, Morphy Richards to clean up this mess There's still evidence of remains in the carpet. You know why the electrolux didn't perform well? Not only because of the cyclone, but also because of the low suction at the hose as well, because the seals around the cyclonic chamber leak a lot of air. So watch this. You can hear the air leaking. And I have taken this apart to see how it works, and it's just a terrible design. And we thought that the Hoover Twin Chamber wind tunnel was bad. This is a whole other league of terrible. It is very nostalgic for me, which is why I have it. And because I wanted to show you guys what this machine's like and demonstrate it on my channel. But yeah, that is the Electrolux, the Boss Cyclonic Light. And the Morphe Richards slash Dwarfy Broom, Dwarfy Lizard, whatever you want to call it. Vacuum cleaners. Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you my two vacuum cleaners today. I've got the Morphe Richards Ultra Light. 1400 watt vacuum with a bag and on the right we've got the Electrolux Bar Cyclonic Light with 1300 watts of power. The Electrolux on the right is from 1999. The Morphe Richards on the left, I'm not entirely sure when it's from but it's definitely from either the early 2000s or the mid 2000s. Let's start off with the Morphe Richards then. This machine was actually, believe it or not, a shark. I believe it's called a shark roadster in the USA. But yeah, they had these in the USA and I believe they had a headlight on the front as well where the head is somewhere around here. So you got a nice looped handle, which is very comfortable to hold. This is the cable. I've got it wrapped up like this because the lower cable hook has unfortunately snapped. So I've got it just chucked on the upper cable hook for now. So you got this dwarfy little picture here of a man lifting the hoover because it's meant to be really lightweight. But the thing is, in today's standards of 2023, this machine is considered heavy. You got 10 free DOS bags when you get this machine. These days, right? Right? you're lucky to get even one spare bag do you know what i mean so good old 2000s hoovers there's a bag full indicator there as well which goes orange to show you that the bag is full and inside the bag housing is pushed down this clip right here like a hoover pure power the bag door comes off i've currently got a pneumatic hepa flow bag in here which does fit really well i must say and that's a nice 
modification because you get better filtration. So there's a pre-motor filter in the base right here. There's a bit of particles on it because the bag has been reused multiple times. But yeah, this is a nice little cartridge thing that you open up, right? And there's your thin filter. And then you just slide that filter back in there. That's your pre-motor filter. And your secondary filter or the post-motor filter is right at the front. You just unclip that clip. And there's your post-motor filter, which has two layers. One's a really rough layer and the other side is just really soft. So it just goes in one side like a hinge and then it just clips in just like that. Right, popping the bag back in now. Pop your bag door on and there you go. You've got four height adjustment settings. You've got deep carpet, you've got medium carpet, you've got low pile carpet and you've got hard floor mode. But to be honest with you, I do use it on the hard floor setting a lot because it doesn't actually stay in contact with the floor. And speaking of the brush bar, here it is. It's a very quirky looking brush bar. Okay, you got nice, decent bristles. They're not soft, but they're not stiff. They seem to be decent bristles. There's two rows of them as well. There's no sole plate bar, so that does actually allow for the carpet to get lifted up into the brush bar. And it has got beater bars. So see these beaters right where? Where are they? Yeah, these plastic bits just stick out. So it does beat the carpet quite well, actually. Not amazingly well like a Kirby, but it does actually vibrate the carpet somewhat decently. There's a little crack here though. I'm not sure if you can see that, yeah. That happened when I stored it in my shed because you know the state of my shed, right? I put vacuums stacked on top of each other and they just shoved in between each other. And then one of the vacuums, I think it was a Hoover Hurricane, pushed itself against the cleaner head and then it just snapped in half. It's got no tools either, but you can probably tell by the shape of the locations what tools are meant to be, right? That's a crevice tool, obviously, and there's your dusting brush that's meant to be in there. An extension sheet with a crevice tool that's meant to go in there as well. And this is the hose. Look at this hose cuff design. I know it looks unusual for a vacuum cleaner, hose cuff, but the thing is, right, it's designed a bit like a Henry, but looking quite different to a Henry hose cuff. It's at an angle, right? So you can just hold that and use it without any accessories and then just quickly do your cleaning like that. And that just goes in very awkwardly into the internal hose at the back, as you can see. Yeah, quite a decent length. I'm not sure if it's going to reach the top of the stairs, but I think it almost can. So it's a model 73300. You got a rocker switch on the side, that's your power switch. You got a carry handle on the back as well, which is actually quite secure and sturdy. It feels very robust, actually. To be honest, the whole vacuum feels robust. It feels like it's better made than a Hoover Pure Power, believe it or not. These upright locks were designed properly. If I was to push my foot down with this, it actually feels like it's not going to go down. It's not going to break, really, unless I do it really hard, you know what I mean? But if I was to do that with a Pure Power, it would definitely fall over and snap its release pedal. So you've got two humongous wheels on either side, right? Almost like cylinder vacuum wheels. But these wheels don't spin when you're wheeling the vacuum around. Because on the back, you've got two little roller wheels for that purpose alone. And in use, you've got all four wheels spinning. And it's not only that, you've got the two high adjustment wheels spinning as well. So when you're vacuuming, you've actually got six wheels in total. Isn't that mad? Okay, now let's see what it's like to switch it on and vacuum with. So, power switch on the side. It's not ridiculously loud, but it's not exactly quiet either. It's about average for a 2000 vacuum. But you can hear the brush bar. It does move the carpet okay enough. You can't really feel the suction though. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the thing does fall over when you do use the hose because of the location that the hose comes out of the top of the machine. And because this is a 32 millimeter diameter, you can use all the Dyson tools and they do fit perfectly fine. So here I've got the DC-17 crevice tool and it fits just like that. Quite an unusual combination, isn't it? Look at that bend in the crevice tool. You got a huge vent over there. This weird hose cuff. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, that's the Morphe Richards Ultralight 1400 watt vacuum cleaner. Now let's move on to the Electrolux. I got this from Beckel 97 so he's done a smashing job on this with the whole refurb. And now I've got basically the best version of one of these you can get nowadays because obviously they're all ruined now, aren't they? Because of the cyclonic design that failed on these. Now, speaking of the cyclonic design, it's quite interesting actually how this thing works. Now, obviously the air path goes up the hose and needs to the bin, right? But this is actually not a cyclonic setup, believe you or not. It's on the other side, actually. So just lift up on this clip, right? <laughs> Look at that. So see that little hole over there? Not the larger one. Unusually, yes, it's a smaller one. That is where the dirt exits from the hose and enters the bin. So this little hole right here, the dirt is meant to fall into the bottom of this bin, but obviously that's not effective enough because it's just a wide air path. There's not even a cycle on at all. So that's the first chamber. Only large heavy particles get caught on the bottom of the bin, right? The majority of the dust and dirt gets 
caked on this tiny little shroud right here. And obviously, because it gets blocked, it will lose suction because it's a small surface area. But a lot of the debris that does get past this shroud right here, by the way, this is how you empty it. It's just a bin flap. Anything that makes its way past this shroud then goes up that hole right here through a duct that goes to the cyclone. And all the dirt's meant to spin out of the cyclone right here. Down this cone, which is a cyclone. And it actually does a pretty good job for a single cyclone, believe it or not. And you actually do get more dirt collected in the second chamber where the cyclone is instead of the first chamber. The air and the dust goes up that chimney part and it comes out of here, goes into there where the pre-motor filter is. And this pre-motor filter is just a thin piece of cloth, really. And the air goes down here into a secondary pre-motor filter, into the motor, and out to the back where your pulse motor filter is. So you've got a casing right on the back, and there's your pulse motor filter. I do like that it's yellow, though. It matches the machine. So there's the information sticker. It says it's the model B4390. It doesn't say 1300 watts on it. It says 1100 watts. But yeah, it's very cool that it's made in Mexico, so I do like that. That probably explains why it feels so well made and durable. This is your hose on the side. It's a very short hose and it's not even a stretch hose either. It's just a ridiculous hose. It's very, okay, I like how it's flexible, but it's very crushy as well. You can crush it just like the Zanussi hose and the Kazdan Toy Dyson hose. You can get a stretch hose for one of these as well, but I haven't got that at the moment. And you've got to really stretch the hose out just to be able to put it back into its location right there. This is your tool at the back, it's the only tool I've got. Look at that, you've got two tools in one, so you've got a dusting brush and you've got a stair tool. In there is meant to be a crevice tool and in there is meant to be an extension one. You've got a carry handle on the back as well, very nice low centre of gravity and you've also got another stair cleaning handle on the front as well. This is not a vent for the exhaust, you saw that was on the back right? Because the filters at the back. I thought these were exhaust vents, but yeah this is your carry handle on the front as well. So you can just carry the machine from there. You've got no swivel cable hooks. You just gotta manually undo the cable yourself. And there's your cord clip as well to keep the cable out of the way. So you've got seven height adjustment settings, which I do appreciate. I tend to leave it on setting three or four on my carpets. And here's a brush bar in excellent, fantastic new condition. If you're wondering what that red thing is, that's just where Sam had actually stuck on a red piece of velvet to help with hard floor performance. But yeah, I do like these brush bars. They work very well, nice and stiff, long bristles as well, which do stick out the sole plate. See how they stick out the sole plate? So that means it's going to reach further into the carpet pile. And finally, you've got the power switch on the side right here. So release panel on the side and your power switch on. It's not very loud. You can see it grooms the carpet very well, even better than the Morgan Richards actually. Check that out. You can see now that there's a bit of dust caking in the secondary chamber more than the first chamber because the first chamber of the bin is not very effective at capturing anything at all really apart from large debris there's just a few bits and bobs in there nothing major so yeah that is the electrolux boss 1300 watt cyclonic light and the morphe richards ultralight thank you very much for watching